Hello and welcome to the GFI software product demonstration series. Today in our demonstration we're going to be looking at GFI endpoint security. Now before we begin let's take a look at some of the stuff that we're going to cover. First of all we're going to look at the status interface, how to navigate that, the configuration options, how to navigate those and find out where to set stuff up at, managing and creating the protection policies that we're going to use to manage those endpoints, the risk assessment scan, how to kick one of those off, and then finally the tools that you're going to need to generate reports. Now before we take a look at the actual endpoint security application, let's briefly talk about what it does, what it looks like, and really how it can really be beneficial to you and your business. First of all, GFI endpoint security prevents viruses, malware, and other unauthorized software from infecting a network by blocking access to the devices that are commonly used that can traverse stuff like that, like USB sticks, iPods, and other uh, storage media like that. And it prevents data leaks by comprehensively controlling access to those portable storage devices. So it not only protects stuff that comes in inadvertently that can be malicious, it can also prevent data from going out. Then it automatically protects newly detected computers by deploying an agent, and then of course after the agent is deployed, sets up a default blocking policy. And then finally, it'll log the detailed statistics about all of the activity, all the stuff that gets blocked and allowed for those endpoints, and then it can be sent automatically either in a daily or a weekly digest report. So let's go ahead and take a look at our interface. Our first view is going to be the risk assessment view. Under the risk assessment area, it's going to show you various different statuses of different components that you're monitoring. It's going to show you data leakage risk level, what that's going to be at based on the last risk assessment scan. Uh, it'll give you the information for those machines or the endpoints that you're monitoring over here on the right. Uh, and that's broken down by a computer name, the current status that it's under, whether it's protected or unprotected, and then of course the risk level based on a color scheme based on what the risk assessment level would be green for good uh, and then following up to that orange yellow and red pretty much similar to how the risk level is shown on this gauge view here then you're gonna see summaries of the last assessment that was ran how many endpoints that it actually checked um, what the average level over here in pie chart format of the protected versus the unprotected uh, and then, of course, various other information like the device usage, where it's going to show you what devices are being monitored, uh, and then those devices that are being accessed. The next view is going to be the statistics section. Now, under the statistics section, this is going to show you uh, various different information over a timeline graph, and that's going to be um, broken down into uh, what ports or how many ports were accessed, um, and then what the time frame was, and then whether or not, uh, also indicated in color, red or green, whether it was allowed or blocked. Right below that, you're going to see a device usage. Now, this is going to be either by device type here on the left, shows you what kind of devices are actually being, uh, being accessed, whether it was allowed, if it was blocked, and then the total count of access attempts. And then to the right, you're going to see the connectivity port, uh, whether that be a USB port, a serial, a parallel, um, Bluetooth, various different types of reports, letting you know how many times it was allowed, how many times it was blocked, and then a total count of how many times access was attempted for that. Now, under the status section, um, we're going to see a quick glance type of status summary of some of the key components that GFI Endpoint Security needs to operate normally. Uh, for instance, under the service status, you're going to see um, the back-end services, making sure that those are running and in a started state. Uh, next thing is going to be the database back-end status, so we can see that Endpoint Security can actually reach and communicate out to the database server that's collecting all those uh, logs for us and then the alerting status which is going to show making sure that the alerting server is available and recording all of those different alerts and then the online status which is going to give us almost a real-time view of all of the machines that are reporting online that we're doing our uh, monitoring for uh, and then as well as the total count of machines then right below that, the agents status, which is going to give us a view of all of the endpoint machines that we're monitoring. 
and then designated based on specific things like the computer name, uh, the protection policy that it's going to follow, uh, whether or not that protection policy is up to date, what the status is, whether if it's online or offline, and then finally the schedule as to whenever the next check-in is going to be. The final section is going to be under the deployment tab. Now under the deployment status section this is where we're going to see the status of the various different deployments for those agents that we're going to have whether it's going to be a current active deployment, uh, a queued deployment, scheduled deployment, and then of course our deployment history. Under our current deployment and this is going to give us a line-by-line -line item view of any current agent deployments that are currently taking place uh, based on the computer name, the progress indication in percentage, and then of course the type of uh, status or the type of uh, action that's taking place, the job that's taking place, um, whether that be an installation or an uninstallation of the agent. Under the queued deployments tab, it'll show us the same thing for any jobs that are waiting their turn, so to speak, uh, if you're doing these deployments in different chunks. So anything that is queued or waiting its turn to get that, uh, either the uninstall or the install of the agent employed, will show up here, again, based on computer name, and then the type of action or job that's going to take place, either the installation or the uninstallation of the agent. If you have some that are scheduled to be run over a certain time or date, uh, you'll see the um, deployments or the uninstall uh, deployments for that matter for those agents listed here. And that will be, again, viewed the same way, uh, done by computer name, what the deployment time and date is uh, scheduled for and then of course the type of job it's running the install or the uninstall then finally the deployment history where it'll show the date and time stamp of any of the deployment uh, jobs that were taking place the computer name that was associated with that job the type of job that was run in this case all of these you can see here were installations and then of course any messages coming up during that install or uninstall process the next section that we're going to look at is the actual configuration section. Now this section is going to cover the main settings for GFI endpoint security. Now this view is going to be broken down also into three uh, primary subcategories, computers, protection policies, and options. Now under the computers section, this is where we're going to be performing basic things like uh, creating new computer groups. Uh, you can find that here under the common task section, which you'll find a very common um, menu or commonality between some of our products uh, as well as endpoint security. So you're always going to have a common section or common task section as well as um, possibly an action section. Here you're going to see the ability to create new computers or computer groups, uh, adding new computers to uh, the server so those can be scanned, uh, deploying agents to all the computers that are listed in the database, and then of course auto discovery settings. So if you want endpoint security to automatically discover any new devices that need to be monitored, you can set those, uh, those particular settings up in there. You're also going to be able to perform various different actions on demand using this action section that we just talked about. Under this action menu, you'll be able to do a direct or on-demand deployments. Uh, you can set up the scheduled deployments. Kind of touched on that a little bit earlier before when we mentioned you can schedule those. Uh, that's where you're going to do that. Uh, you can assign policies to those particular agents for those endpoints after those are done. Uh, you can move computers to uh, different groups in and out of those depending on whether those needs arise. Uh, setting up logon credentials for the interface if you need to have more than one admin. Um, and then of course creating descriptions or removing specific computers from endpoint security if those are going to be decommissioned um, or if those are no longer ones that need to be monitored. We also have in our view, if you look at the right side of the um, of this user interface under this table, this is where you're going to see a list of the endpoints being protected uh, under this computer pane over here on the right. 
Here you're going to see details of each of those endpoints that are listed. Uh, that's going to be based on the computer name, uh, if you have a description of those, uh, what group that they belong to, um, the policy that has been assigned to those particular machines, uh, again, whether or not those policies are up, up to date, the last time that it had been updated, um, if there is a deployment schedule that those particular endpoints are going to follow, and then, of course, the logon that those machines are going to use whenever those agents are deployed, uh, and then also policies that are distributed to those. Uh, and then, of course, any kind of changes, uh, time date stamps, and then any message like auto discoveries if it's picking up new machines or not. The next section is going to be the protection policy section. Now, under this protection policy section, we can delete, uh, create, or edit protection policies to be assigned to various endpoint groups. Uh, for instance, you see that we have three protection policies uh, in those groups already. The general control, which is going to be your general default policy. Um, and then, of course, you can change which one is your default later on. Uh, then we've got the workstation and then the laptop's policy. So you can create as many policies as you need um, once those are set up. From that point, you can uh, select different things about those policies to kind of configure those and get those ready for uh, those particular endpoints that you're going to be monitoring with that. Uh, the security section, file control, logging and alerting, temporary access, and then, of course, deployment. You can also set one of these as your default, as I mentioned, and then uh, whenever new endpoints are introduced into the network, either by auto discovery or by you adding them yourself, it will automatically assume the default policy whenever an agent is deployed to that particular endpoint. Uh, and then, of course, you can change that as need be under the common tasks that we looked at yesterday by creating a new protection policy for creating a new one. Uh, and then, of course, uh, selecting that policy and clicking the set as default policy link there. Under the options section, this is where you're going to be setting up some basic information about setting up schedules and uh, content for digest reports, different things like that. And this can be done either by individual users uh, as far as your learning options or groups. Uh, and then, of course, um, again, setting up what kind of information you want to receive in those digest reports that you get back. Uh, and those can be scheduled as well. Setting up the back-end database for uh, being able to store all of those different logs that come in and out for those endpoints. And then, primarily, you're going to be pointing this to a SQL back-end database. Again, if you're running under a larger environment, it can be something like Microsoft SQL Express, easy free download, 10 gig database. Uh, or if you are managing a larger amount of endpoints, you're going to want to use a full version of SQL, a full instance of SQL for that. The next section we're going to be looking at is scanning. Now, under the scanning section, uh, you can scan your endpoints for the potential risks, as we mentioned earlier. Uh, so you can set up your initial risk scan. From here, you can specify what endpoints to scan, either over a group. It can be done either in an entire domain, uh, or you can specify individual machines by selecting those. Uh, specifying, uh, if you want to run a local baseline scan, you can just simply select local host and then run a new scan against that. Uh, so if you want to be able to add or change the specific machines that you're wanting to scan against, again, click on a scan area and you can actually specify the total area that you want to scan, uh, whether that be the entire domain or work group, or you can add and exclude different things based on things like IP range or a list of computers, um, and you can also set this to be include or exclude on that. So you can say, I want to scan everything in the network except for, and then you can specify perhaps an entire group that you don't want scanned for. Uh, you can also specify uh, individual ports or devices that you're going to want to scan against. This is really helpful because if you have specific ports or device categories that do not fit your criteria, specific things like maybe floppy drives or things like that, uh, some older legacy devices that you may not use anymore, obviously you don't need to be scanning for those types of devices because they do not exist uh, in any sense that you can, you can still change any of those options as you see fit for those scans. 
once that's done the results are going to show up um, you'll see those based on the computer name here the username that the actual scan was run against um, whether or not the endpoint that was scanned over that group or that domain or however uh, whether that's protected or not how many devices have been identified uh, how many devices have been identified as connected uh, the version of the agent that they're running and of course the uh, final risk level that that particular endpoint has been assigned our final section that we're going to look at is the reporting section. Now here it's going to give you some links and some really good information about uh, how to go about setting up the GFI Report Center, which is the primary backend engine that you'll need to run your reporting through. And that's going to be pulling its data from that Microsoft SQL database that we had mentioned earlier under our options sections in the configuration. From there, you'll be adding the GFI Endpoint Security Report Pack. And uh, what this is, is it's a kind of a plug-in for the Report Center that tells the Report Center to look for GFI Endpoint Security databases. And then uh, once you go in the, through that process, you'll add your Endpoint Security license to that Report Pack, uh, and then you'll just simply point the report back to the um, to the database where your GFI endpoint security logging is is occurring. Uh, from there, you can simply run reports uh, about all of those endpoint securities, and then of course you can save those out in uh, HTML, PDF, things like that. I want to thank everybody for joining us today. I sincerely appreciate your time and attention, and really getting a chance to look at how. GFI endpoint works, the different uh, navigation through the user interface. If you do have any more questions, please feel free to contact GFI directly. And if you have any questions or you require a few more resources other than what we covered today, you're more than welcome to reach out to us. You can uh, find a lot more information about GFI endpoint security on our website, www.gfi.com, uh, or you can reach us at sales at gfi.com if you'd like to give gfi endpoint security a spin for yourself and get a free trial started we'll be more than happy to help you uh, get started on that thanks so much again for everyone being with us and remember gfi software is the software solution for small and mid-sized business